Hello friends and welcome to this guide on configuring your Emacs to uh, basically meet your front-end or web development needs. Um, so if you're looking for a guide to uh, help you out and in, in basically having a starting point for your uh, web development uh, environment uh, and using modern tools like LSB or Treesitter, auto-completion and etc. Uh, basically making it like VS Code or IDEs like JetBrains uh, Jet and such. Um, feel free to follow through this guide. And if you fell into troubles or problems, uh, don't hesitate to leave comments and ask questions. Uh, I'll make sure to answer them. Um, so as a starter, I would say that you would need Emacs 29. Uh, the previous versions, you won't have TreeSitter um, natively enabled. Uh, you won't have probably LSP as well, although you might be able to use other LSP packages like LSP mode and stuff. But um, for a perfect replication of what I'm going to do here, I would suggest you to have Emacs version 29. And additionally, I think, uh, or let's say I assume you would have LSP uh, for TypeScript and the formatting tools like Prettier and the linting tool, uh, ESLint, uh, already installed in your project or whatever. Um, I won't go through it. Uh, I think it's quite easy to do so and it's like um, I don't want to make the video longer than it needs to be. Um, the first thing that we're going to go through is the tree sitter package. Um, so as I said, uh, Emacs from version 29, we have tree sit EL like uh, natively built in. But for it to be configured, uh, you might have to do some like heavy lifting and your configuration might look a bit like uh, ugly let's say uh, and you might have to manually handle things uh, Treeset Auto is actually a cool package it tries to do some of those heavy lifting for you and like um, you won't have to worry much about uh, like uh, the let's say revisions of grammar package and stuff uh, so it simplifies your config very much it also like automatically um, switches between the tree sitter mode and if it like for example doesn't find any tree sitter packages or whatever uh, it falls back to the normal uh, mode like let's say top typescript dash mode um, so in that sense it's also a good uh, like automation of your uh, development environment um, so let me just copy paste this um, to the init el so this init el let me just explain a bit uh, this is just a like sample in the EL. I've done some very minimal uh, changes to it, like adding evil mode and setting up, for example, use package, uh, adding which key and stuff, uh, and changing the theme a bit. Um, you don't have to really cop uh, like copy this or uh, want to use this if you already have some uh, configuration baseline configuration for your own needs. The main part, which is related to this video, starts from the tree set part. Um, so yeah, I just want to explain that. Also, this inner EL is related to another Emacs frame, uh, which I'll show you in a bit. So I save this, and if we go to this Emacs frame here, you could see that uh, if I restart it, it would probably want to uh, basically um, install it. I think it's already installed. If I open a sample project in, for TypeScript, um, you would see that... Um, is now going to prompt me um, that the grammar for TSX is missing. Um, now, why is this so? Just to make sure that you understand the configuration. Um, here, we have already put this a prompt uh, like config where it says that whenever it doesn't identify a grammar package for, let's say, TSX or whatever, it will just prompt you with uh, like this error and ask you whether you want it to be installed automatically. So we're going to go ahead and install it. Um, so now it's cloning and installing it. Now it's asking me about TypeScript that it's also missing. Again, I'm going to just clone it and have it installed right away. Um, so as you can see, now we are having tr um, tree sitter uh, or TypeScript tree sitter mode. Uh, we could also confirm this uh, by the fact that if we go to Control H M, we can see the major mode here is said to be TypeScript TS yes mode, uh, which confirms that we are now indeed using TreeSitter for our TypeScript and probably JavaScript files. So also just to mention these two lines, uh, let me just maximize this. Um, so these two lines are just there for telling TreeSit Auto to only care about 
these languages in the list and by default um, this package like kind of looks for all the languages that it supports like even rust or golang or nix or whatever um, but uh, for the sake of at least um, showing you what this package is capable of i um, thought to put this these two lines of uh, config here and um, okay so let's go to the next one uh, now we have tree set setup we now need lsb for lsb um, we have a couple of options in emacs um, so we have eglot which is i think the native one in emacs you could kind of uh, set it up without that much troubles um, um, but it has one major downside and that is the fact that you can't have multiple lsb servers um, within a single buffer and that can be kind of a blow for some people including me uh, where sometimes we have to deal with multiple LSBs um, the second one is LSB bridge uh, it's uh, newer than Eagle and even LSB mode I believe um, it's also said to be the fastest out of all so I guess in large projects it just works better than the others but since it's a bit more low, relatively immature um, you know you might have you might not have that much uh, integration but we're going to use LSP mode here uh, I've used LSP mode myself and it's probably the more popular one uh, in comparison to the other ones um, and I mean it's a decent package really you can't really go wrong with LSP mode anyways um, so let me just explain the uh, configuration here a bit um, so we're just going to add some uh, hooks for LSB to basically load LSB mode or set it to true when we are in programming mode. So prog mode is like for programming mode and it's built in Emacs. It's just going to tell Emacs that whenever we are editing some source code for some language, um, you know, basically start LSB. Um, and when LSB starts, basically, we're going to enable the which key integration. I've already... I think um, told you that uh, I've have I have which key uh, available uh, in the in the EL, so um, we're just going to go ahead and um, use which key here as well. Um, so this part is an optimization, so read process output max. So we're telling the LSB, let's say processes, that you could use um, a multiplication of these two numbers, which is around like one megabyte. Um, for like um, sending and receiving requests with the server, the LSB server. Um, so um, by default, it's within the range of a few kilobytes, I believe, uh, which can make it like slow and inefficient, or it might be a bit like annoying to use. But uh, you know, nowadays we don't have that much uh, issue with like increasing memory with the computers and laptops we have. Um, so having it within this the range of megabytes is probably going to make it more. Uh, I mean, it definitely does make it more snappier. Um, the other package, uh, oh sorry, I mean the other thing we're going to set uh, during initialization of the package, like as soon as it loads, it's just going to set these um, um, variables. Uh, first one is a completion provider. We're setting it to none. We're going to use curfew afterwards. Um, I'll show that. Uh, in a bit. Uh, we're also going to set the prefix for LSB mode basically command map to control C. So since we've already uh, enabled which key integration uh, we're gonna also add a prefix um, to make it like make the command map appear in the mini buffer. And lastly the diagnostics provider is set to fly check. So in the linting section I'll show you the flycheck uh, basically configuration. Flycheck is a package for Bell diagnostics and linting. It's quite popular. There is an alternative called Flymake, but I believe Flycheck is better ma maintained and also a bit newer, like a bit more modern. Uh, you can't go wrong either way, I guess. Um, feel free to try out whatever uh, suits your own needs. Um, and LSB UI is like some, let's say, additional extension to LSB mode. It adds some cool features like, let's say, um, let me show you here. You can go to the repository uh, and in the readme you could see, for example, it adds some sideline. Uh, you can do some peeking through the references, uh, similar to how VS Code does. Um, you can like go through the symbol references 
and you have like some documentation UI and stuff. Um, so it does a couple of nice UI like um, tweaks for you. Uh, makes it a bit more like a modern to use, let's say. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add this and I'm going to save it. But before I go ahead, I'm going to also do this that um, I'm going to add fly check right away as well. Because if I don't, it's just going to throw me an error that like fly check is not loaded and LSP mode won't work um, just right away. Um, so for that sake, I'm just going to add fly check. Um, so let me just explain here as well. Like there's not much here going on. I'm just going to add some delay I, um, for um, displaying the errors. And um, you could go through the uh, previous and next error with uh, Alt M and Alt P, uh, which is um, like something I use. And you could just change it to whatever you want. Um, so yeah, let me go to the net, uh, frame and restart Emacs. All right, so now we have both LSB mode and flycheck installed. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and see uh, how we can like how it looks like when we use it on our test project in next. So yeah, when you load LSB mode or load a project for the first time, it's just going to ask you where the root folder is and you can just go ahead and select which, whichever option suits your own needs. I'm going to select I. And now we have both um, LSP mode and flycheck running. Um, if there was uh, no flycheck, it would have um, like raised an error in the mini buffer saying that there is no flycheck, even though you have specified the diagnostic provide as flycheck. Um, there is a new bar here. It's like giving us the scope of the, let's say, um, function or code block we're in and the file we're in. Um, so this is a nice little addition. And basically, we have now um, LSB running. If we, for example, switch this to a string, we can see now we have an error because we cannot multiply A and B since they have different types. Um, yeah, and you can see, thanks to LSB UI and also flycheck, we can have this uh, error raised here. And it tells us basically that this error, this type error exists. So if we just fix it back to number, uh, we have now LSB going up, um, um, going fine, I guess. If we do person dots, um, or if we, for example, want to complete some, let's say multiply, we don't have any suggestions. That's because we don't have auto completion set up yet. Um, for auto completion, uh, we're going to, as I said, use curfew. Um, and uh, there's also company. It's, I guess, a bit more matured uh, package. But curve is fine as well. I use it nowadays and it, there's not uh, like... Either way, again, you won't uh, be facing much troubles, I guess. Um, so I've kind of just put some default like um, configurations you would find even in the repository uh, page of Curfew. Uh, basically cycling through options is enabled and like the automatic mode is enabled some delays for like pop-ups and stuff you could again play with these and see uh, which uh, like values suit your own needs and um, I've put some key bindings here as well so you could go and cycle through the next and the previous options in the pop-up window and lastly I'm just enabling the curfew mode globally and asking curfew to like sort the completion list uh, based on history of usage um, and here is a nice little package for making it a bit more modern i'm just going to add some nerd icons to the pop-up window and we'll see it shortly i'm gonna copy this again and add it to the init here window save now let me restart emacs again no, we don't want to save anything. So it is now installing. Let's see how long does it take. Okay, now it's installed again. I'm going to quickly go to the test project. So, oops, ah, I don't have under tree. Um, okay, we have this. Now, 
we're going to test, for example, if we want to complete multiply, it gives us a suggestion. We already have multiply defined. It also suggests, you know, built in functions and stuff that LSB server suggests you. Um, or let's also try like person dot. Uh, and now you can see, for example, the different fields available in the person interface. So in here, we specified person having a name and an age. And you know, LSB now is able to suggest us, and Curfew provides the front end, the completion at points, let's say, function. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, we really kind of have everything we need for a good um, web development environment in Emacs. Um, and I think the only thing that remains at this point is the formatting. Uh, for formatting, I'm going to use Affilia, it's, I guess, a very popular. Uh, package in Emacs, you could uh, basically um, specify formatting options for probably all languages out there, at least the popular ones. And uh, here I'm just going to set the um, prettier formatter as uh, the formatter for uh, uh, TypeScript files and specifying it here. Um, now we have affiliate as well. So let's, for example, uh, restart this um, and then I will show you how the formatting works. Um, affiliate is like mostly for like, uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. It does auto formatting, format and save and stuff. And by default, it does format and save and that's what I use myself. Uh, so control X, control F, uh, TS, test, and then we go to index. So let me just like mess up some formatting somewhere. Let's put it like this. And let me just put this like this as well. Um, F5, for example, say that there is no space between one. Now, if we do save, we could see that now Prettier basically fixed things for us. Uh, pretty cool, actually. And at this point, I guess we can say that we have all the like presetter LSP completion linting and formatting set up um, and you can just use this as a starting point and take it forward um, and tweak it to your own liking I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any suggestions or even questions feel free to leave a comment uh, I would also like you to like this video or even subscribe if you're looking for more content like these um, or if you want any particular like guide or video please let me know in the comments uh, i'll be sure to check them out thanks